Hello students, in continuation with my lecture series for nanomaterials for BTEC first year students, in today's lecture, I will tell you about the fabrication techniques of nanomaterials and their applications. Please do not forget to subscribe the channel in order to avail many other benefits. Fabrication of nanomaterials. What is meant by the word fabrication? Fabrication is basically the process which is used to shape, cut or mold the material into useful item. So common fabrication techniques of day-to-day -day life are cutting, uh, stamping, shearing, wielding, etc. So the morphology and characteristics of nanomaterial depend mainly on their fabrication. The two important approaches for fabrication are the top-down approach in which the nanomaterials are obtained from bulk substrate and then they are mellowed down to small size or the bottom-up approach in which we proceed step by step from the atomic or molecular scale to the higher scale because we are moving from bottom to up. Now, for your syllabus here, see, look at this diagram. Here you can see clearly the top-down and bottom approach. See, top-down. Here you are having a bulk structure. You have changed it into powdered form and then you have changed it into nano or the smaller particles. For the bottom-up, you are proceeding step-by-step to get the nanomaterial. That means the atoms or the molecular states have been made smaller in size and then more smaller. So atom or molecules by molecule way. Now the top down approach. One very famous method is chemical vapor deposition. This technique is basically a coating process that uses thermally induced chemical reactions at the surface of a heated substrate with reagents supplied in gaseous form. In this method, nanoparticles are deposited from the gas phase. Material is heated to form a gas and then allowed to deposit on the solid surface. The deposition can be either physical or chemical. Nanopowder oxides and carbides of metals are formed by this process. And lastly, here you can have a look at the diagram along with explanation. Chemical vapor deposition technique. Here look at this diagram. First step is you take a carbon source and in gas phase or as an energy source and use uh, such as using an energy source as plasma or heated coil to transfer energy into this gas phase. Then use hydrocarbons as the carbon sources including methane, carbon monoxide and acetylene etc. These hydrocarbons are going to float or flow over through the quartz tube being in an oven with a very high temperature. This high temperature, the hydrocarbons which I have made to enter are broken to be hydrogen carbon bonds and produce pure carbon molecules. These carbon molecules will go towards the substrate which is heated and coated with a catalyst and carbon nanotubes will be formed in the proper parameters maintained. So it is a very simple procedure. We took the hydrocarbons, we heated them, we made them flow over through a quartz layer so that hydrocarbons get broken and we get the pure carbon which gets deposited on the required substrate. So what is the biggest advantage of this process? With a very lower power input, we can proceed. Low temperature range. Purity is one of the very good advantage of chemical vapor deposition technique. And this method helps us in producing both multi-walled and single-walled carbon nanotubes. The other method is the Sol gel method. The Sol gel process is a more chemical method or the wet chemical method 
for the synthesis of various nanostructures, especially metal oxide nanoparticles. What is sol? A material which when reacts with liquid, converts it into a jelly or viscous fluid. Colloid, a substance which converts liquid to semi-solid or viscous or cloudy. Gel, a more thicky substance. Scoot, a compound is burnt to give black fumes. Shape is called a gel. So basically, the sol gel are suspensions of colloids in liquids that keep their shape. So you should be knowing these basic words, what is meant by them. Now we proceed to explain this method of sol gel technique. Here is the diagram. The sol gel technique consists of first step of hydrolysis, meaning chemical reaction because this is a wet technique of interaction of chemicals with water leading to decomposition of both substance and water. Then the formation of three-dimensional network by chemical or physical linking here. There all chemical work is going on here in this diagram as you can see that it is all chemicals. Aging means the initial sol particles will be kept for some time so that they become larger. Drying, if it is alcoholic solution, the drying process is done by burning the alcohol, aging and drying. After drying stage, the produced gels are powdered and then they are calcined. That means heating the solid to high temperature for the purpose of removing volatile substances, oxidizing a portion of mass or rendering them friable. After this, we get our nanoparticles which are characterized by powdered X-ray diffraction and visualized with the help of scanning electron microscope or and transmission electron microscopy. So sol gel method consists of hydrolysis, gelation, aging, drying, densification, crystallization, calcination and observing it under a microscope. So this is basically a wet chemical method. Advantages of this process are that it is cheap, can be processed with low temperature. It promises high purity and achievement of uniform nanostructure, producing high quality materials with homogeneity and purity at low temperature. The biggest disadvantage of this method is that it has a long processing time and the cost of raw materials which are used here are very high. The advantages of nanomaterials, you can expect this as a 10 mark question in your question paper, section C. Many advantages are there of nanomaterials because of their shape, size and inner structure. Basically, because of their size, they if they are used in drugs, they can target a specific location. Carbon nanotubes are replacing all silicons in electronics, replacing microchips. Carbon nanomaterials are used in market in cosmetics, electronics, sunscreen, paints, nano coating. Nanoparticles are used in catalysts to boost the chemical reaction. Nanomaterials are being used in electronics. They are also being used as scratch proof eyeglasses, crack resistant paints, anti graphing coating for walls, transparent sunscreen, stain repellent fabrics. So, quickly, what did we study? We studied that nanotechnology deals with nanostructures and nanosystems. Single unit is sized between 1 and 100 nanometer, quantum dot, quantum well, and quantum wire. Two methods of synthesis, top-down chemical vapor deposition, bottom-up sol gel technique. The chemical vapor deposition method consisted of hydrocarbons being passed over oven 
high temperature hydrocarbons broken to pure carbon these carbons diffused to form substrates of nanoparticle sol gel method consisted of hydrolysis dilation aging drying densification crystallization and visualization under a sem applications coating systems based on nanoparticles coating for windows fillers for paint system nanoparticles in catalysts to boost chemical reactions thank you